Hi guys and welcome back to Science Wrap. A couple of weeks ago I asked you guys on Facebook and Twitter to submit some questions for a science themed Q&A and I am honestly super excited to answer these today. And a big special thank you and a shout out to St Boniface Elementary School who have submitted some just really amazing questions that I'm super excited to answer today. So I wanted to give these questions at least a little bit of detail without going into too much depth but still I can just tell already that this video is going to be massively long. So what I've done is I've split it into two parts. Today the first part is going to be about sort of the physical world, space and a couple of extra questions that are more about sort of the scientific method. The second part which I'll post next week is going to be all about the natural world. If there's a particular question you want answered, have a look in the description down below. I'll put the time codes for when I answer each question down there. Otherwise, just feel free to watch the whole thing. There's some awesome, awesome questions in here. Right, without further ado, let's go. So to answer this, we first have to think about colour and heat. And these two things are actually really closely linked. So the hotter an object is, the shorter the wavelengths of light that it gives off. Shorter wavelengths represent colours like violet or blue, whereas longer wavelengths represent colours like orange or red. Outside of visible light, there are things like gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared, and radio waves. Now the Big Bang is essentially the beginning of time, space, everything. The theory states that everything started from one single infinitely dense and infinitely hot point. For something that's infinitely hot, the wavelengths would essentially be infinitely short, so something even shorter than gamma rays. If we could translate this into something we could see, we could essentially say that the Big Bang was kind of a bluish white colour. But remember, the Big Bang is also infinitely dense. That means we probably actually wouldn't be able to see anything at all. Think about it like this. You hold a t-shirt up in front of you and you can kind of see through it. Now imagine crumpling and squishing that t-shirt up into something really dense and trying to look through it then. You couldn't. It's the same kind of idea. Now, one last idea and kind of a mind bender to throw out there at you is that the Big Bang represents the beginning of time and space itself. So without time and space there, there would be no color, there would be no you, there would be nothing. So you couldn't really perceive color at all. <laughs> really like this question because I've actually answered it in one of my previous science raps and it represents some of the newest knowledge that scientists have. Scientists hypothesize that a substance called ammonium hydrosulfide along with cosmic rays in space are what give Jupiter its red color. Here on Earth, ammonium hydrosulfide exists as crystals, so scientists could take these and bombard them with cosmic rays. What this did is it tore the ammonium hydrosulfide apart and created a new substance. This new substance was shown to absorb lots and lots of blue light. And so what was left was essentially this reddish brown color. If you want to know a little bit more detail about that one, I'll link the video here and you can check it out. The short answer to this, unfortunately, is that scientists don't really know. Dark matter is a hypothetical substance or something that scientists have theorized exists because of the effects that it has on other bodies in space. It has these sort of gravitational or pulling effects. The reason it's called dark matter is because it hasn't been observed yet. It's either completely transparent or so completely dense that any kind of light is just absorbed by it. The universe basically is filled with three main types of stuff. There's ordinary or baryonic matter, and this is anything made up of atoms, so it has a mass or a weight to it. Maybe surprisingly, this ordinary type of matter only makes up about 5% of the total matter in the universe. Dark matter makes up about 26%, 
and something called dark energy, which is a hypothetical form of energy which scientists think is causing the universe to expand, makes up a whopping 68%. The universe really is a really interesting place, and there's a lot that we don't know about it. Often scientists can observe certain things happening, like the orbit of a planet changing, for example, and hypothesize or predict why this might be. The fun part then is figuring out a way that they can test these predictions here on Earth. Technically, a true mirror will reflect all light back that comes into it, and in that sense has no color at all. The reason we think it's silver is one, we usually draw them like that in cartoons, and two, sometimes mirrors are made with silver substances or a silver backing like aluminium. For the long answer to this question, I would definitely suggest checking out Vsauce. They do amazing videos, a lot of them have a science theme. I'm going to link that video right here, so check that one out. I think one of the hardest things to convey is the uncertainty of science. This all comes down to the fact that when we carry out a scientific experiment, we're essentially trying to disprove something. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmes, right? Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So often you'll see headlines that say, scientists prove X, Y, and Z, but the wording of that is not 100% true. So that's probably the first thing. One last thing. I think maybe some people still have the idea that science is kind of boring and stuffy and old, but this is definitely not the case. Science is amazingly creative, uh, fun and really challenging sometimes, but it's so cool because I get to be curious every day, figure out how the world works, understand it and actually make a real contribution to the world. And what could be better than that?